Hi everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Dragon Quest XI. Uh, uh, so last time out, uh, we were drafted in by the uh, Prince of by Prince Faris um, to deal with um, to uh, become a part of the uh, San National Hinnis place because he can't ride a horse because he's a little bitch, um, and so. He promised that if we did that for him, he would get us the rainbow, which would allow us to uh, continue on our journey and find our way towards Yggdrasil. Uh, so at the start of this part, we are now seeing that we're making sure that Prince Faris lives up to his uh, deal, um, and so we so we can get what we require. Do it, Prince Faris. Give me that shit, son. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure he has. The truth of the matter is that my friends here have come to Galopolis in search of the rainbow. Something's Majesty, about to go wrong, can you tell? The beast has returned. It attacked one of our men while we were out on patrol. <sighs> the of the something is else has happened. Why must the <sighs> creature always it's something that I'm going to have to deal with here, isn't it? <laughs> so yeah. Here comes the next section. Basically, the Slayer of the Sands is back in the Celestial in the Celestial Sands. Uh, basically, this giant monster, which is uh, which has terrorized the people of um, uh, Galopolis and the surrounding area, um, <clears throat> and so Sultan of Galopolis basically be th uh, because he thinks that his son can do no fucking wrong. <laughs> basically, says. Hey, Faris, capture that shit, man. <laughs> capture the, the, um, um, capture this giant creature and bring it back here so that it can terrorize the people no longer. Um, but of course, <sighs> this knight in training is a piece of shit and doesn't want to do it by himself because he's such a fucking coward. <sighs> Can you tell what's going to happen next, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> we'll see soon enough. Although I do like the acting here from the voice actor of Prince Faris and um, the way that he moves as well. It's very... <laughs> you can sort of tell that he's absolutely petrified and I love it. Like here, this walk-off is just like, shit, I have to do this shit. <laughs> Why me? <laughs> to kind of like... Yeah. So basically, he's gonna ask us to deal with this shit. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ! You are such a fucking useless piece of shit, Parrot Prince Ferris. <sighs> Would you go with him as chamber? Yeah, yeah, fine. I know where he is. Jesus Christ! All right. All right, Prince Faris, where are you, you useless sack of shit? <laughs> and this, <laughs> I, I do love this acting here, though. Jumps down into the uh, the begging position, <laughs> which I kind of like. <laughs> oh, he's acting so good. The voice actor for Prince Faris is so fucking good here. So yeah. No such a thing is impossible. I am no knight. I neglected So yeah. Not only can this guy not fucking ride a horse, but he's also neglected his training as a knight and has basically uh, had his vassals uh, fight all his battles for him. He's truly a piece of shit. <laughs> oh, I hate that. I fucking hate this. <laughs> I hate his reasoning here. I'm an only child. I've been, you know, I've been coddled since birth. So therefore, it's ever. It's, so therefore, it's not my fault that I'm acting like a, a spoiled little shit. And it's just like, <sighs> you know, it's so badly I wanted to just go. Fuck you, Prince Faris. I'm not doing this shit. <laughs> See you later. Just, you know, you've laid your bed, so go lie in it, you 
You've made your bed, so go lie in it, you piece of garbage. Don't you see? If you refuse to help me, I will be sent to my doom. And now he's using emotional blackmail. Once again, fuck you, Prince Faris. <laughs> I only just met you, you motherfucker. <laughs> now here, if you say no, he just goes immediately down into it and he, I'm begging you. And he'll keep doing that over and over until you say yes. Yeah, it's pretty much a but thou must kind of situation. So we kind of have to deal with him. And we have to hire... <laughs> Sorry, we have to help him here, so... Fucking hell, you piece of shit. Oh, looking at this, actually. I, I actually bought the um, rapier from the sh from the um, weapon store and upgraded it. Uh, it's the best weapon you can get for the main character this moment in time. At least in terms of, um, uh, you know, a single-handed sword. <laughs> Veronica? Serena, we must be hard on him. <laughs> He's a piece of shit. Serena, you're way too fucking nice, love. But anyway, so now we have to go into the Celestial Sands and help Prince Faris, Prince Loser, <laughs> um, defeat uh, the the Beast of the Sands. The um, I can't remember. I never remember the name. The Slayer of the Sands, I think it's called. So yeah, we have to defeat the Slayer of the Sands in order for us to gain victory. In order for us to get what we need, which is the rainbow. <sighs> Waiting for me, are you piece of shit? <laughs> so yeah. Now he goes out. <sighs> and away we go. I need no disrespect, your highness, but how could you do this to us? You have volunteered us for certain <laughs> I like to say I was, uh, you know, his um, his subordinates, his mates here are all kind of just as bad as he is. They're all kind of like, why are you asking us to do this shit? We don't want to die to this slayer of the sands. As always, allow me to introduce our knights in shining armor. These I think this is why I really don't like Prince Faris, uh, at least at this point. Is because it's all right for him to be kind of like a a coward and a selfish prick, but it's the fact that he kind of acts like such a big shot whenever he, whenever you, you know, he begs and pleads to for you to help him, and then when you agree, he fight, and then when you finally agree, he just starts acting like this big I am kind of super macho asshole again and it's just like ah, i can't stand you piece of, you stand you piece of shit i hate ah i really hate prince faris at this point and of course best boy is here <laughs> i saw <Vando. laughs> watch do you want to come with us buddy there's no such thing as a good beast hunt friend if i were you i'd run along back to the circus well, to be fair, I kind of understand why Eric would say this here at this point, <laughs> because, you know, as far as we know, at this point, uh, Silvando is, you know, just a guy, you know, who works at the, at the circus. Very talented dude, but we don't really know what his fighting style or whether he can actually hold his own in a fight. But of course, this is a must thou, but thou must kind of moment as well, where we have to bring Silvando along. So let's do that. Alright. Come, my horse. Let us be off. Okay, so we've also got a couple of side quests for us to kind of um, finish off here. Uh, the first one we're going to do here. Uh, so, yeah. You're looking for cat balls and you're looking for this golden prick. Um, <laughs> this is the golden cat, the golden globe. Um, Svando, why are you hitting him? Uh, so basically, the golden, uh, the golden globe, is basically what we are looking for here. We want to 
Kill him as quickly as possible, and he drops an item called the Golden Globule. Um, he actually, Golden Globule is a bit of a pain in the ass because it does hit fairly hard, and its defense is, is pretty strong as well. Um, so he's a bit of a pain in the ass to deal with. Um, like I've gone, I've, I've basically done two lots of attacks all the way through against this prick. And, yeah, he knows Deadly Dance. Deadly Dance instantly kills an opponent. Instantly kills a character. If it ha if it hits. So, yeah. That's bullshit. <laughs> and, yep, so we've got Gold Ore and we got a Golden Globule. Um, and that's what we need for the first of the side quests. Um... What I did then was go back to town and use um, um, use a go to a church to basically use the resurrection um, ability to get everybody back up to full health. Like I say, Golden Globule. It's a pain in the ass because it has that move and it's basically I think it hits two members of the party randomly, and if it uh, hits, then it's instant death guaranteed. So it's a real fucking pain. Um, something else which I should mention about it as well is that this time during this playthrough it wasn't too bad. It took me three attempts to find a golden globule, so a golden globe, so it wasn't too bad. But on my first playthrough, it took me like ten or twelve uh, random battles to find the prick. But anyway, these are the prestigiators. You only find these um, here, at least at this point in the game. You only find them here. Um, in terms of defense, they aren't really that strong. Uh, they'll go down in a couple of hits um, pretty comfortably. So yeah, they're really not all that hard from a def they're not that defensively sound. But they do know, sorry, but they do know um, have a whole bunch of uh, magic attacks that they can use, which can cause a metric fuck ton of damage. I believe that is the uh, the technical term, <laughs> um, and so they're a bit of a pain in the ass to uh, deal with. Hi, buddy. Special mission to get these ancient ruins. Yes, these ancient ruins are not related to anything now, but by end game they will become very, very, very important. Okay, so now it's time to do our second side quest. This is a Spitzfire. You have to. Fight one of it, so the, the the thing that they want you to do is they want you to f um, defeat a Spitzfire using um, a certain um, what's the name of it? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna use it. I'm using the pet pop to pep everybody up. Um, I think it's a walk on the wild side. I think. Um, so sh they want you. They want you to uh, attack. So what they want you. So what the best thing to do here is um, pep everybody. Get everybody pepped up, and attack this thing until it goes into um, the orange. Um, yeah, I don't know what I'm thinking. What am I thinking? Um, yeah, so you want to attack it until it goes into orange, into the orange, and then once it's um, in the orange, as it is now, use Wild Side, which is basically the hero, Serena, and Eric, which looks pretty cool. He kind of, they both kind of power him up, and then he goes on a frenzy and just wastes the opposition, um, and so. Yeah, basically, once you've got Eric pepped up with Wild Side, you want to use Eric to wreck this guy. And once you've done that, that's the quest done. It's not too hard. The hardest thing is to get everybody um, pepped up at the right time. Um, but um, the Spitzfires, Spitzfires in terms of enemies are... One of the harder ones, because they have um, double attack, 
so they can attack multiple times per turn uh, and they hit really fucking hard um, they use like flame breath uh, and they also use physical attacks so yeah um, Spitzfires are a bit of a pain in the ass they're not um, uh, just because of how hard they kind of hit um, damn it the crabs have run away <laughs> Um, yeah, I think here I was just having a look around just to see, is there anything else I can pick up? It's like, no. Alright, let's move on. So then we want to get to here, because this is where, it, um, uh, Prince Faris has taken a rest. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Prince Faris, you're a fucking pathetic dude. You call yourself a fucking, a, a, you know, a prince and trying to become a soldier? You're fucking useless. If you say so, dude. You get your beauty sleep, Prince Dear. You've got a hard day of getting us to do your dirty work. I love it, Sylvando here, though. <laughs> he's just kind of uh, a. He's just. Nice chat, shall we? <laughs> I just like how Sylvando is just kind of. He, um, he has no qualms about um, hiding his disdain. <laughs> For what so Prince Faris is doing whatsoever, it, I, I really, really together. like it. It's <laughs> oh, he's such a fun character to watch, um, um, and I just like how God. blunt he is with it's Prince Faris in this early section of the game. In this, you know, the first section that you it's kind of meet him. We're none too sure ourselves just yet, but for the moment, we're trying to get to Yggdrasil. We need to understand more about the mystery surrounding the Luminary. You see. It's all to do with a horrible being called the Dark One. He wants to bring death and destruction to the world. Serena, to you're talking him. too much, dear. <laughs> all right, big mouth. Yeah, Veronica's just like, for God's sake, <laughs> what are you doing? We've just met this dude and you're already telling him about everything. Can you chill out, <laughs> please? So there's a dastardly villain coming to steal all the smiles and laughter from the world. And you four heroes are on a daring mission to stop him before it's too late. Oh, now that does sound fun. <laughs> I <laughs> <laughs> My apologies. But I do like um, Sylvando's kind of attitude here of, yeah, this sounds really fun. I want to kind of get in on this shit. <laughs> Oh, you don't want to hear my boring old stories. And yeah, yeah Sylvando is um, Come on, all for asking Ready us guys. about what the fuck we're doing and while we're on an adventure. Um, oh. Sorry, while we're on an event, why we are. I'll say that again. He's all, uh, all for asking why we are on, ad on an adventure together. Well, but um, when it comes to finding out information What's about him, thing? he's, you know, he wants to keep it all very hush hush. Um, in fact, um, from what I remember, yeah, we don't find out about Sylvando's story for a really long time. Um, it takes a good while before we find out what the hell's going on with him. But let's kill you first. Oh, new enemy. Oh, no, we haven't. <laughs> Whatever. Um, neither of those we've already seen. Um, so, die, Needler. And this guy is... The Crabadabadoo. There you go, I remember that. That's such a good name. Um, they're fairly weak. Fairly straightforward. They, I mean, they hit decently hard. But they're not really all that difficult. Oh, and we've faced these guys before, but this is the first time that we see Shades as a regular enemy. Um... Shades are basically their defense is pretty high, um, but their attacks don't really do too much damage. So they're kind of um, they're not that difficult to fight against. And yeah, went down pretty comfortably in the end. Nice. Alright, let's move on. 
Ah, here we go. New enemy. This is the Flython. The Flython. <laughs> Which I kind of like the name of. Uh, it's a python that has wings. Shocking. But, um... In terms of, um... Defensively, these things aren't particularly tricky. Um, Attack-wise, they hit decently hard. I didn't really let them show it off, but they hit decently hard. Um, and at the same time, they also... <laughs> so they hit decently hard, but... Um, and they also have, um, I believe... Uh, you, they use um, poison for status effects. Damn it. Um, so, you know, they're not... The Flythons aren't too tricky to deal with. Um, but, you know, they still are a bit of an upgrade from... A slight upgrade from enemies we've fought before. So, yeah. They're not too bad. <laughs> Alright then. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We've caught up with Prince Faris and his bunch of goons uh, and so now it's up for us to take on and now it's time for the boss fight the against the, the Slayer of the Sands. I don't see it anymore, kid. The cowardly creature is no <laughs> to be found. I do like that acting there where he's kind of like breathing a sigh of relief. Oh, thank fuck, nothing's here. And then he's like, now I have to be pompous and really show off. It's a good thing he wasn't here, and ra I, my brilliance forced him to run away. But no, now he pops up. <laughs> oh, so real. oh my god, Prince Faris is such a fucking loser. So yeah, this is the Slayer of the Sands. He's essentially a giant scorpion. Um... I have to say, in terms of design, I really like its design. It's kind of, it's a very cool looking design. Um, I like how it, I like its colorization, it, the way it's colored as well does um, make it fit in with the whole desert motif as well. So I, you know, I really like it. I think it's a really cool, cool looking design. So yeah. Now we've got to take on the Slayer of the Sands. Bring it on, bitch. <laughs> I'm going to kick your ass. The Slayer of the Sands draws near. Okay. Okay, so what we're going to do first is... Sylvando will get a few hits off. Um, what you want to use here... Is you want to use... Uh, your most powerful techniques to start off with. So let's try and use a slit and that didn't work. And so what we're going to be doing with Serena, we're going to be using her to buff everybody and to heal everybody. Um, Serena, uh, sorry, and Veronica, we're going to use Sap to drain the en to weaken the enemy's defense. Uh, in terms of attacks. His physical attacks aren't actually all that hard. To, 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 uh, they don't really hit all that hard. Um, at least not to a ridiculous degree. Um, uh, so yeah, we're going to have Serena to cast buff and to heal whenever possible. So yeah. Yeah, so it, in t if he uses a regular physical attack, he's not going to cause that much damage. Um, the problem comes in with his other attacks because I think he can... Um, yeah, so he can use a desperate attack, which can really cause a fuck ton of damage. Um, he also has an attack which can hit... Uh, enemies f uh, can hit one person, one member of your party for about six hits, and if they all connect, it can really fuck you up pretty, pretty easily. <clears throat> um, and he also has an ability which can cause you to go all 
which can confuse you, which is really, really irritating. Yeah, also knows Kasap, which increases everybody's defense, and it spews dust. Dust, if it hits you, can cause you to not see, so your ch attacks have uh, a, a lower chance of hitting. It's particularly bad if, um, for example, um, if uh, Veronica gets hit with it, it can be, it can cause a real uh, it can cause some real problems because of the fact that you know her attacks are all range based. So if you reduce her ability to hit, and like yeah, that move causes so much problem. Yeah, and of course it's confused. Yeah, it's super annoying. So at this point, I'm just like, fuck it, and it's dead. <sighs> Slayer of the Sands is not too bad uh, if he doesn't confuse you too often. Um, so yeah, you just need to be a little bit cautious with him and just keep healing up your party as and when it's necessary. But anyway, that's it for this part. Join me next time for the next part of Dragon Quest XI, when we'll be heading through the when we will be heading back to Galopolis um, so that <laughs> Prince Faris can revel, revel in his newfound glory and we can hopefully get the rainbow. So, see you next time.